Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're looking now at various examples of how you can use the Color Burn Blend Mode. To start off with this, do a quick reminder of how it works. We've got here a gradient to show the effect from dark to light. And we overlay on this a mid-gray rectangle. And then if you set the Blend Mode of this to Color Burn, you can see that mid-gray has effectively made the first half of this go completely black, but then you've got the full spectrum going from black through and white is still there. And then if we change the uh, how dark this overlay is, if you make it darker, that dark pushes right over until you've lost everything but the white and you make it the overlay lighter and it goes back towards the original. So in other words, it darkens quite heavily shadows and then progressively into midtones and so on, but it always preserves the white. So what can we do with this? Well, simplest thing is to hit Control J and do a color burn, which gives you that very much darkening of shadows there, whilst preserving the whites here. You're also getting this very much a color effect up here. So in, in colors, they can change the colors to something a bit more intense, but you may or may not want. So a way of addressing this is to basically make the top layer black and white. So if I go to Adjustments HSL, then if I turn the saturation down, you can see this has had quite a significant effect. So if I go from before that deep blue to far less there, so I've reduced that quite significantly. The second thing you can do with HSL is if you turn up the luminosity, it kind of gets back towards the original picture but the effect on the shadows doesn't arrive as fast as it does in the sky. So if I go turn this, the original picture and this here, you've got that darkening of shadows without that effect all over the place, which can be something of a problem. So that's something else you can do with it. Let's just take this off for now and we'll go to some curves. And when you've set the blend mode of curves to color burn, you've got the same effect. You can lighten it up with curves like this. But what you can also do is to go to the curves layer, hit control I to invert it. So it goes back to the original and then paint back. In other words, using dodge and burn. So I grab a paintbrush, make sure I'm painting in white and set a fairly low opacity and lowish hardness, whatever suits. And then when I paint on here, I'm factually painting in that darkness. And I can always go back to that curves layer and change this effect. And then I can paint on here and sort of layer it up if it needs to be. And if I get it wrong, I can always go back and paint over it in white. So you get this overall effect of being able to dodge and burn in that color burn effect. So what else? Well, another one thing that can be done is to put in a fill layer. So if I go to layer and new fill layer and change the blend mode of that to color burn, when it's white, nothing happens. But if I change this now to RGB, then I can click on here to change the fill. And as you go up here, you can see you're changing the colors within the picture quite significantly, and particularly into some of the areas that you might want an interesting effect in. So it gives you that control. If you go down darker fill layer, then the darker fill layer color will have a disproportionate amount. So normally you have to have a very, very light amount in fact, you can start with the sliders here and just move them a little bit down to get the effect you want. So that's that. Something kind of related to that, a, a fifth thing we can do is to take the original picture, hit Control J to duplicate it. And then what we're going to do is go to the filters, blur and average blur. And that's the average color throughout. And then I can go and color burn on top of that. Well, that's kind of put that whole thing you know, quite in again. So you're intensifying that overall color. But if I hit Control I to invert that layer, 
And now what I'm introducing is the opposite, and that opposite will always match quite nicely in. So I can just then adjust that with the opacity down, and you've got a little bit more colour now brought into it, but it fits in very nicely. So I've got before and after with the that little bit of colour. I can always intensify that colour also if I wanted to, for example, with an HSL saturation adjustment. Anyway, that's it. Some of the things you can do using the Colour Burn. Hope that's useful and thank you very much for watching.